Hello and welcome to Parkinson's Life, the monthly podcast offering a voice to the global Parkinson's community. I'm Laura Smith, editor of Parkinson's Life magazine, and each month we'll be bringing together two people with experience of Parkinson's to share their stories. Through lively, open and honest conversation, we'll be exploring life with the condition, discussing some of the challenges and sharing ideas on how to live well with Parkinson's. The Parkinson's Life podcast is sponsored by the European Parkinson's Disease Association, the leading voice for Parkinson's in Europe. For the latest research and information on how to live well with Parkinson's, visit epda.eu.com. This month, we're bringing together two people who have cared for family members with Parkinson's. Ola Larsson lives in Stockholm in Sweden and is the main carer for his wife, Eleanor. She was diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2006 at the age of 60 and is president of the Swedish Parkinson's Disease Association. Ola also runs a support group for Parkinson's carers, so he's seen firsthand how Parkinson's can affect other couples' relationships. Ivona Kudova lives in Zlin in the Czech Republic and has been a carer for her mother, Milada, who was diagnosed with Parkinson's in 2012 at the age of 67. Ivona spent six years living with her mother before needing to change the arrangements and bring in other family members to help. Ola and Ivona discuss their experiences of caring for a family member with Parkinson's, including changing family dynamics, the impact on their day-to-day lives, and how they switch off in an effort not to burn out as carers. My name is Ola Larsson. I am from Sweden and I live in Stockholm. Uh, I've been uh, married to Eleanor for 30 years and uh, in 2006, she got the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease. So she has been uh, has disease now for 13 years. Uh, we are now 73 years old, and we still live rather normal life. The Parkinson's disease has not affected us too too much, I think. Hello, Ola. Uh, my name is Ivona. I'm from the Czech uh, Republic, and my mother has uh, the Parkinson disease, and I was a uh, full carer for her for six years. Actually, I was because I was living in with my mother, so I uh, had the chance to properly actually watch what is what she's doing, how is she doing, what is changing, uh, even if she didn't recognize it uh, herself. Her right arm didn't, didn't swing uh, properly. So uh, in the beginning, we thought it was something doing with a computer arm and sitting with a computer all the day and there was stiffness and something like that. But, but then she got a, a neurological doctor and uh, they asked Eleanor to, to tap his uh, fingers <laughs> And she couldn't do that <laughs> with the right arm. It, it was just, oh, it started, okay, tap, 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 tap. And then it stopped. And then the doctor said, hey, you've got Parkinson." <laughs> of course, it was catastrophe. Like, you know, she was falling down. She didn't know what is happening, so she was grabbing everyone to... Uh, in order to help her. It's all, all around, we were seeing that she's changing. She's not socializing anymore. She's sitting in the chair, at the chair in the, in the living room, going actually nowhere. Awful, awful. Before my mother was diagnosed, she suffered a stroke. Okay. Ah. Yeah. Well, at the time, I think I wasn't at home. I was traveling. I think I was living in Ireland. And she, I remember she, she said she fall, fell down and then she woke up and then was back on her. Maybe somebody helped her to, uh, you know, to stand. And I think she went to the doctor and she didn't realize it was a stroke, small one. So she was untreated. And then a couple months later, uh, the sh- shaking, uh, there was a shaking, uh, the hand, the right hand was starting to shake. 
And so she was diagnosed in 2012. My wife got Parkinson, but I don't see myself like a carer. I'm, I'm her husband, and I take take part in all all the things we do together. And the carer, uh, that's a, that's the doctors and nurses. They do the care. I'm just an audience to look at what the carer do for my wife. Sorry, but I can't say I'm the main carer for my wife. The, the hospital and the doctors, you know, and she's got the best doctor, I think, or in whole Sweden. The, they are the carer for, for Eleanor. I'm just her husband, and I live with her. I, I, I don't need yet to take care of her. And um, the, the on and offs are very clearly now. Uh, you, you're back one year. If you saw Eleanor for one year ago, you couldn't uh, understand that she was Parkinson. But now you can see, oh, that's something wrong. Ola, what has changed this year? This last year? The last year has been uh, uh, the different is uh, the slow of speech and the different of of um, manage all the day. Uh, she she got very tired easily. She got tired and she got to bed and yeah, and like that. Avona was it very difficult for your mother to to ask for help. Or did you, did she want it to manage by herself? It's going to be very difficult for my mom to accept the help, but it's very easy to get my mother upset. Uh, so I I realized that I can't like order things to do. I can only offer. Let's let's go for a trip or let's go for to a coffee bar, and I have to wait until she accepts it. If she feels if she's pushed. Immediately, she said no. But it took me a couple of months to realize, you know. How do you think caring for your mother has changed your life? Uh, it's very demanding because you want your mother to be your mother as it was before, but she's not anymore. She can't play the role anymore. I mean, you used to feel the love, but that's all she, or you feel the support because it, it's not discussed. She even wouldn't discuss this. I don't, I, I don't think so. She would even let me to think that we have changed the roles, you know. I think, I, I know, I think she is aware that she's not capable of doing things like she was, but she says, I think she, because she's getting old. Yeah, I wanna, I recognize when you describe the situation, your mother, your mother don't want to be sick and she don't want to take the medicine. For seven years, I have been the chairman uh, and responsible for a carers group. And, the, the, and there have been a big queue for carers who wanted to be in this group. But uh, if you are more than 15 people, uh, you, can't, you can't talk to each other in this close way. You have to talk to each other because uh, yeah, we are too many then then there is just some who will speak a lot and the other don't speak. But in this group, we have every member in the group has five to ten minutes to talk about the situation. And then the other other in the group have response to the to the life they are dealing with. And then they we discover that Oh, we got the same problem here. <laughs> got the same problem, and it's supporting each other. It's so important. It's been so important. I'm always crying. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, this group we care uh, They're mostly of in the group are are women, and they are treated their husbands, and their husbands don't don't want to be treated. They don't you know, interfere in my life. I don't want to take this medicine. And they're so, they're so sad about this. I can't, I can't help my husband. I've been married to my husband for six to five years and I can't help him.
Well, uh, does your wife know how uh, difficult you find it? Yes, she is in the same situation. She also know that I got worse, that she got worse and worse. She knows that, and we have to deal with it. Well, it's not in the group. There is one lady who said that she said like this. I was so sad last year because my husband was so ill, but when I see how he is now, I find. Why was I so worried last year? You see, uh, don't worry about the future. It doesn't help. No, no. We have to accept it at first. And Eleanor don't want my help when, in the day, during the day. No, no, no. She manages all the time by herself. She don't want her help. But, but I'm sitting up mostly till 12 o'clock or at noon, and she goes to bed at 9 She's tired, or all is tired in the evening, and go to bed. Uh, sometimes eight, and then she woke up at five in the morning, and I sleep to nine, nine in the morning. So, so uh, we meet, we meet at uh, dinner <laughs> in the afternoon. <laughs> yes, and uh, oh, it's uh, it's so. Tough. It's so tough now. My life is so tough. I don't know which leg I'm going to stand on. <laughs> it sounds, it uh, can be uh, quite lonely. Yeah, it is. But this group of carers, it was very important uh, to um, hear other, other in the same situation. It's so important. And we, uh, we supported each other very, very much. It's so good. It's necessary for the carers to to interfere in this kind of speeches because there are people who are in the same situation and, and they understand how it is. They can comfort each other. It's very important. Y yes, you are right about that. Uh, when I realized that my mother is actually sitting in a living room all those days, going anywhere because she didn't want to get the stroke again, you know, I said, let's Hello, let's set up a Parkinson club in our town because there was an association already existed, the club, and she was involved in this with me. We've traveled within the region. Uh, we tried to visit people who actually were traveling a bit too far to another Parkinson club, and we tried to talk to them and with the idea that we, we would set up a club in our town, and she was with me visiting those people. I ran it for three years because I wanted my mother to socialize. So I, I tried to let her to socialize with the people with the PD, yes. you know? Yes. And she was happy. She, she was agreed to do it. How do you think caring for your mother has changed your life? A lot, you know, I remember I was like, when I when I went out, not watching my mother, I felt guilty. So I actually I didn't relax. And I when I needed to like when I wanted to see my friends, I just needed to talk to my sister, and she like took care took the care for the weekend. But it was maybe four, three, maybe five weekends per year last year. It was too demanding, and my mother was too demanding because I wanted her to do some things, exercise, to go for walk, to you know, to drink water, but she didn't. So I, I um, it was too much. Ola, how much do you worry about the future? Uh, it's a very hard question. I worry very, very much. <laughs> On a scale from one, zero to 10, it's 10, 11. <laughs> I can see this slope and i know it's going to be worse tomorrow there is a very good expression i heard from a, a man who has parkinson he said he said like this today is it better than tomorrow but it's little worse than yesterday i don't want to think what happened tomorrow because because it does it doesn't help me if i think about what happened next year, 
it doesn't help me to think about the future. For me, the way I escape, so I, I enjoy cycling very much. It, it keeps clearing uh, my head. Because if you cycle fast, you actually can't think about anything else. Uh, but of course, I do meditate a lot because the cycling wasn't enough. My oasis in life to manage with this terrible disease is to try to do something that has nothing to do with Parkinson's disease. And one of my oasis is to sing in a choir. There I met people with joy and we are singing together and it's wonderful. So if you can't sing, start to sing and start to <laughs> being in a choir. You have got friends and you've got... Yeah. Oh, it's wonderful. I can sing a song. For the sea river, for the old rain, for the old mill to come, the lazy, lazy river, for the noon day sun. <laughs> Oh, Ravana, uh, it's been lovely to talk to you. Yes, Ola, I think it'll be lovely to catch up. The EPDA meeting is in November this year, so hopefully to see you there. The Parkinson's Life podcast is sponsored by the European Parkinson's Disease Association, the leading voice for Parkinson's in Europe. For the latest research and information on how to live well with Parkinson's, visit epda.eu.com. Thanks for listening to the Parkinson's Life podcast. If you like what you've heard, please rate and review us on iTunes and SoundCloud. It helps others to find us. And if you'd like to share your story, offer suggestions for future topics, or tell us what you think, you can visit us at parkinsonslife.eu. Look out for episode three, which will be released in the coming weeks. And until then, take care. Take care.